What's up, Kentucky? What's going on, America? We got my Tony Aloysius grip server T-shirt. Aloysius is a German word that means fame and war. So Aloysius means fame and war. It's an old German word, Aloysius. So Kentucky, things that happened, U of L. Recently, U of L police officer was found in contempt of court last week for her disrespect and her demeanor when telling a, di a Jefferson district court judge that she was too busy and she wouldn't be attending a trial she had been subpoenaed and told to attend. You do not talk to a judge like that, Jefferson District Judge Stephanie Pierce Burke told Officer Kristen Bird, Kristen Bird of the U of L campus police Thursday during a contempt hearing. Burke sternly criticized Bird's actions and fired her $200 plus another $134 in court cost for refusing to attend a trial in a traffic case last week. Despite getting a personal call from Burke. <laughs> so the district judge Burke actually called the police officer up to make sure she gets to try. How many times does a judge actually call you up? Don't they just usually issue, issue a bench warrant and next time you're out you're just being hauled in handcuffs? This is uh, July 30th, 2012, um, CurrierJournal.com article written by Jason Riley. So, uh, your demeanor and tone of voice when talking to a judge was unbelievable, Burke told Bird during the contempt hearing, and that a defendant that had spoken that way to a judge would have been jailed. So, because you're a police officer, you're actually above the law, right? You're allowed to talk to judges out of the fuck you please. But not this time. The judge is like, hell no, hell no, I will not go. Kristen Bird, Burke told Kristen Bird. So Kristen Bird is the cop who uh, thinks she's high and mighty and bigger than the judge. So Burke told Bird the only reason she was not putting the officer in jail for contempt, contempt was because the judge had talked with her supervisors and knew they were going to handle the case internally according to a video of the hearing. Burke said Bird was also asked to appear in court the day after for a contempt hearing for refusing to show up for the trial, but Bird told her she couldn't because she had an off-duty job. Sorry, I gotta work. I, sorry, Judge, I can't go in today for the trial. I got a, I got a job. So Burke then called Bird's supervisors, one of whom showed up with her on court Thursday. The judge told Bird her actions had embarrassed all police officers in Jefferson County. You're not above the law, she said, warning Bird that any similar future conduct would lead to jail time. I will not hesitate to put you in jail. Bird, who had already missed one court hearing in the case, apologized to Burke for her actions, saying there is background noise during the phone and she didn't realize she was uh, she had been talking with a judge. <laughs> so, oh, I'm sorry, I thought it was one of just your secretaries. I know it was the judge actually calling me. There was all this static, you know, in the background. I was like, who is this? I don't know. Go to what trial? Who, who is this? Is this a secretary? I ain't going to fucking go to your trial. Fuck you. So... Burke said that Bird should not be speaking that way with a prosecutor either. No, he shouldn't be talking that way either. We're all on the same team here, the judge says. The cops and the judges and the prosecutors, or we're all on the same team, right? They're all against Americans and Kentuckians and Louisvillians to make sure that their private prison make a ton of money. So corporations will rule over the 99%, the 1% can dominate and smash the unions and make sure that everybody in Louisville stays in perpetual poverty. Make sure there's plenty of Fishervilles and plenty of um, at least 10,000 homeless, at least maybe 20,000, maybe 30. I mean, you gotta, you need a poor class for capitalism to really work. You gotta maintain poverty so capitalism can uh, exploit them and you know get them to do the jobs nobody really wants to do anyways. I mean, seriously, if you didn't pay, uh, well, I'm not going to go into that. But um, we're all on the same team here. <laughs> That's what the judge says. The University of Louisville police officer did not immediately return a phone call seeking comment. Of course, U of L's got secrets. Farrah Ramsey's board of trustees, they jacking up your tuition. They don't give a fuck. Um, the traffic case was dismissed when Bird failed to appear. So Bird didn't even show up for the fucking traffic case either. So the first one that she uh, was supposed to go to, she didn't even go to. Reporter Jason Riley can be reached at 584-2197. So I don't know. I kind of like when people stir things up. So Officer Kristen Bird, I'm kind of glad she 
talk to the judge like a regular person, and the judge just didn't like to be treated like a regular person, so they had to demand to respect, look, you will respect me because I'm the judge, and I have all the power. I'm an unelected, unaccountable dictator, and I'll do it as a fuck I please. You cannot stop me. Um, but the judge is right. They're all on the same team. Public pretender. That's uh, uh, Even the public pretender are on the, their team. they got to maintain a relationship, so... Um, and actually, one good thing, um, UofL uh, stood up to Chick-fil-A. Uh, they're trying to take it down. They're trying to, they're for gay marriage and uh, Pharaoh Ramsey's, or uh, I'll give him his, his, I'll give him his name on this one. Um, uh, James Ramsey's, President James Ram Ramsey's of UofL. Uh, he is standing up to Chick-fil-A, looking to get rid of him from the sack, and says, you know, we do not support hatred. What the, what the fuck is a business supporting hatred for anyways? Um, and the argument that, how come you're not being tolerant of our intolerant views? Because <laughs> you're a fucking hated, filled fucking dickhead. Fuck you. Uh, you want to hate gay people? Get the fuck out of my life. Fuck you. Fuck you, you fucking piece of shit. Homophobia destroys cultures and lives and... Uh, it keeps males, men, from having regular relationships with everybody. That's why there's so many fucking uh, crazy-ass fucking people out here. That's why they're, you know, like every fucking serial killer is a fucking man. Men are the ones that are more violent, more likely to be violent, and uh, reciprocally, the police, who are violent people themselves, since we live with a violent state, I'm sure they don't set a good example. Um, but the police, I don't know, I was going to say something about their, they matching up violence. So, they, uh, you know, fighting violence with violence, chicken or the egg, who actually started it, I'm not for sure. The police disproportionately go after young men, right? So, since the police go disproportionately after young men, are the police starting the violence by picking on young men and saying this is how men act and we fucking fuck with each other and we fight each other and we beat each other up and that's the way a real man acts? Or do we actually, you know, talk it out? Do we talk about our feelings and shit, you know? Uh, and it's traditionally the former, you know, not the, not the latter. Um, so another thing out of Kentucky, this is a... There's some U of L news, I guess, and here is some Eastern Kentucky news. Coal industry sheds jobs, leaving Eastern Kentucky economy in tatters. By Bill Estep, Lexington Herald Leader, uh, July 29, 2012. The impact of an estimated 2,000 mining layoffs this year is hitting home across the mountainous coal counties of Eastern Kentucky. Gary Hall of Pike County, whose job at a coal washing plant is scheduled to last a few more weeks, might have to tap his retirement nest egg if he doesn't find mining work. Kyle Thacker, laid off from his job as a utility worker at an underground mine, has thought about going back to school to become a welder, but said he might have to move from Knott County for work. Jeremy Sloan moved to Lexington with his wife Marcy and their two-year-old son Braxton after he lost his job driving a Giant dump truck at a Perry County surface mine in April. He's trying to get on at Toyota in Georgetown. Other laid off miners don't know what they will do. The cutbacks will ricochet, ricochet through the economy in an area where good paying jobs, especially for people without college degrees, were in short supply even before hundreds evaporated. It's going to start hurting Walmart, Lowe's, all these stores, said Hall 51. I don't know what all these coal miners are going to do. Some are going to start to lose their homes. The century-old coal industry in eastern Kentucky has always been cyclical, spiking in the 1970s and then dwindling over the two decades before swinging back up for a time. That traditionally has raised hopes for another comeback, but there are concerns employment won't ever return to the levels of just a few years ago. Federal analysts project central Appalachia is at the front end of a steep, long-lasting drop in coal production. Some of these mines are not going to come back, said Michael Dudas, a managing director at investment firm Stern, Agee, and Leach Incorporated, who follows the coal industry. Is the war on coal to blame? No. But the belief, uh, the, the racism in Appalachia is to blame for the anti-Obama phobia. Fuck y'all's racism. I'm tired of y'all being so fucking racist. Y'all 99% white. 99% white. Y'all almost fucking exterminated every fucking person of color. The Melungeons is the last people there. And the only way, reason they survived is because they told y'all they was Portuguese. 
Yeah, what about your all's uh, blue people? You want to be racist? I mean, shit, you all in the incest so much, you all skins turning blue. Yeah, so stop with the fucking racism. That's such bullshit. Um, the, the belief in Eastern Kentucky is that federal environmental rules are to blame for the loss of coal jobs, the war on coal that officials in the region decry, but several analysts said other factors led to the layoffs this year. Most notably, they pointed to the historically low prices for natural gas and the unseasonably warm winter of 2011 and 12, with, which left power plants with stockpiles of coal. Other factors, such as the slow recovery in manufacturing and the broader economy, also have played parts in the drop in demand for coal. Current market forces were the prime dry, driver in the layoffs, said Michael Tien, an analyst with Morningstar. Changes in drilling technology have allowed companies to unlock vast new sources of natural gas in recent years, sending supplies up and, uh, so supplies up and prices sharply down. So, those are some of the reasons. Uh, uh, natural coal is cheaper. Um, so, that's a uh, bad economy. But uh, it's Kentucky's coal. We should just nationalize coal anyways. It's our coal. We should just take it and uh, have free electricity. Use our coal to fund uh, everything Kentucky. That's how we pay for our schools. That's how we'll pay for the roads. That's how we'll pay for health care. That's how we'll pay for everything with our coal money. Instead of just a severance tax for the eastern Kentucky counties, and Frankfurt's always trying to fucking take their, their tax, they got that severance tax for themselves, and they need it. Letcher County, get Letcher County some water. Well, somebody gives them Letcher County some fucking water. Letcher County has 60% of Letcher County has no running water. None. Zero. Zilch. 15 of the poorest counties in all of America are in Appalachia, but if Letcher County has got 60% need not even running water. They're sitting on coal fields. They're a beggar sitting on a throne of gold. Okay, their poor Letcher Countyans are sitting on all this coal underneath them, and they should use that coal in order to get themselves themselves some running water. Running water. That's like third world country standards. You're saying that we don't have running water. Some of our people don't have running water. How the fuck are they drinking? How do they shower? How do they bathe? Where are they where are they taking a shit at? Where are they pissing at? I mean, give me a break. No water, no sewage, no you know, not nothing, nothing clean, no hygiene, no sanitation. They cleaning themselves in the creek. Are they getting water from the well? Are they getting it from the you know, septic tank or not septic? <laughs> that would be nasty as fuck. They got a septic tank. Is it all just going over the hill? Where's it runoff going? Um, but a cistern? Did they have a cistern? Are they going out with a tank and a, and a pickup truck to get themselves some water and bring it back? Is that how they got running water? How are they fucking doing this? How they got running water? You know? Um, so, little Kentucky news there. I'm doing this uh, Revolt Louisville. So this is a part of the uh, Louisville Revolution series. Right? Um, want to just check the time. I think I got maybe two minutes. Okay. So, Revolt Louisville is comparing the Occupy movement with the other movements, and really there is no comparison, but the 1848 revolutions is so similar. There is diffusion of revolutions, diffusion meaning there is a, a lot of revolutions in one area at one particular time for no apparent reason, just all kind of just happening organically, it's just the people are pissed off about the oppression. So, um, the... Um, yeah, so I was talking about the, uh, the the 1848 revolutions, which had ended up failed. Karl Marx wrote his Communist Manifesto, and then 50 countries just burst up in the revolution. So after the 1848 revolutions failed, a lot of Germans come to America, and a lot of the other Europeans came to America. One of the main reasons why the 1848 European revolutions had failed, the you know the white nations, spring of nations, the, the European spring of nations, I guess, um, white nationalism. So the springtime nations for white people, This the reason why they failed is because the middle class people cannot relate to the poor people. We need the lump of proletariat. It need to be amongst the 99%. We got lots of crazy people. There's lots of bad things that's happening in the communities, but we've got to have solidarity. We've got to put our arms around everybody. Love your enemy. Didn't Jesus Christ say that? So let's be Christians. Let's be Christian-like in that regard. So 99%, yeah, there's going to be craziness that's happened everywhere, but the um, we've got to inspire the masses and the middle class. Intellectuals cannot be fucking over-intellectualizing this shit. It's fucked up. We need to do something about it. Let's get down the streets and stop commerce and make our demands. Get rid of the leadership. Get us some democracy. Get us some resources. 
uh, get us some freedom, get us some peace, get us some justice and some safety. Um, let's actually do something for ourselves, do something democratic, stand up to our government. We're free when the government's afraid of us. If we're afraid of the government, that's when it's tyranny. Tyranny. Okay? It's tyranny. And it's tyranny now. We need some democracy. So, occupy Louisville.